Well, hello, folks. Uh, welcome back to my shop again. Sorry, it's a big mess. We're uh, doing some house renos right now, doing uh, replacing some uh, stucco siding with uh, hardy board. Uh, but that's an evening job. Uh, this is a fun daytime thing for me. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to do a DIY dust cover for a turntable. Um, you see a lot of turntables out there where the uh, dust covers are cracked and it's very expensive to replace them. If you uh, go online, eBay, all the different sources of uh, uh, purchasing dust covers. I bought this one actually uh, years ago and uh, it's basically a what I used it was for a template and uh, I made my own uh, DIY copies for uh, my Thorns turntables. So this was my for, for my first turntable. It's very expensive to buy. It came from England um, and I thought well heck I could probably do the same thing. So I basically copied the design for my own uses and uh, I like it. It's a great design. The only thing is what it does is um, when you put it on the on the platter it leaves some of the turntable a little bit exposed for uh, dust collecting down on it and uh, I thought maybe I could uh, do something a little bit better so I've got three other Thorns turntables and a Lenco that I've actually made covers like this for. Uh, my latest was a T TD160 that uh, I've just uh, refurbished and the last thing it needs is a dust cover so I thought I would renew my old uh, DIY post on how to build uh, dust covers. It didn't really go into a lot of detail of how I did, did it or do it and um, so I'm gonna probably uh, go through it a little more detail in this video just to show folks how I did it and uh, to show my DIY uh, bending machine that I uh, that I constructed along with a, uh, a Variac over here which you can use to uh, energize it and you can actually uh, bend and make nice new uh, nice folds in uh, in acrylic so I've got a sheet of Lexan here um, acrylic whatever you want to call it um, uh, yeah so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cut this down to size and uh, I'm going to make a uh, uh, construct a similar one to this instead of being uh, rounded on the platter what I'm going to do is make it all squared off and then uh, cover the whole uh, plinth area, of the top of the plinth area of the, uh, the turntable. So I'll, uh, I'll stop here um, and we'll go down and have a look at the turntable I'm building this for and we'll get some dimensions off of it and that's what I'm going to use to uh, size the, uh, the sheet of uh, Lexan that I'm going to need to cut out here. What I do is I, it's got a film on it here as you can see and what I'll do is I'll draw out the dimensions on this and then I'll, uh, I'll cut it down to size um, for cutting. I've tried all kinds of different techniques. You can get a glass cutter and etch it, but I find sometimes it cracks and snaps. Um, I find the best way of cutting these things is actually using a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade. And uh, I'm able to cut them nice and straight. Uh, you can finish off the edges too by uh, using a nice torch because it'll, uh, it'll polish it off basically. And then, uh, and then we also have to cut the hole for the uh, the spindle so that uh, it rests on the same spot on the uh, on the turntable. So let's go down and have a look at the uh, the turntable I'm building this for, and we'll get some dimensions. Um, and then we'll uh, come back to the shop here, and we'll show you how we uh, we get this done. Firstly, I wanted to show you this. Uh, this is my uh, British Austin Powers. Uh, system that I put together uh, a long time ago ba based on uh, British quad gear that's why it's got the uh, the British sort of motif I didn't have a British turntable so I used a uh, German thorns and I dressed it up like a uh, like a, uh, a British flag kind of thing to follow the Austin Powers motif that you see there and uh, here's one of the other DIY um, uh, I guess uh, covers, dust covers that I did, and uh, it's a uh, easy one to uh, just lift off, and then uh, as you can see, put back on after you're done, and then it keeps, you know, dust off the arm, dust off the uh, the the uh, the platter, and uh, but it does leave this part open, which I often frequently have to dust, and some does get in the side, so 
My design plan is for this turntable, which I've just completely refurbished. And I've got a multi-part video series that I've been uh, filming on retuning and setting one of these things up. I built the plinth. I uh, transferred it out of the old crappy plinth. I built this plinth. And, uh, and then I also did all the suspension tuning. I changed out the arm on it. This one, the, uh, the, old, the, uh, the old one actually had a, a bend where the, uh, where the head shell, the TP60 head shell goes onto the TP11 arm. And uh, so what I did was I got a new arm from Switzerland and I substituted that out. I put on a, uh, a Q-up lever so that uh, it will auto lift at the end of the, uh, the record once it's uh, finished playing so it doesn't uh, wear out your stylus, which is a gold ring E3 on this. And uh, it's a lovely, lovely, lovely sounding turntable uh, right next to my big Pioneer SX950 that I uh, refurbished last summer. And that's another eight part video series, I believe, on uh, completely rebuilding and recapping and changing out all the transistors and all that kind of stuff on that one and even building the, uh, the cabinet. So um, the dimensions we're going to need. So the way I, I envision this is we're going to use a design similar to this one here. So what I want to do is I want to have the, uh, the uh, plexiglass or Lexan or uh, acrylic, whatever you want to call it, uh, come up like this, over, down, but then I'm going to go full size of the, uh, the plinth top um, all the way out to here and then down here. So that way I basically have a sheet of, uh, of uh, acrylic uh, to cover the entire top where dust settles down on it. It'll be open on the ends, uh, makes it easier to lift it off and everything. Uh, you might get a little dust settling on the outside edges, but that's not a big deal. I can't do uh, uh, boxed in ones. I don't uh, have any kind of uh, acrylic welding kind of capability or whatever. So it's basically just going to be sort of up, over, with a hole drilled in it like this one, uh, up and down and over. So the dimensions I really only need are uh, from here and so I'm going to go from the middle of the plinth. This one's a little wider So of course I'm going to be measuring off of this. So it'll be from there to there Will be my length and the width will be from here to here and I'll just use the same height that I've uh, used for all of the other ones to uh, to make the uh, detent for the, uh, the uh, protecting the tone arm. So um, I'll take those measurements and write them down and uh, and get back to you. So we'll get back up to the shop and uh, start in on the project. So what I'm going to use is uh, for the width I'm going to use 13. I've already measured it uh, accurately so I'm just trying to hand bomb this. And if I go by, by lengthwise it's going to be 16 and a quarter and that's basically going from halfway here to halfway here. And then that should uh, settle nicely on the uh, the top of that and uh, let gravity do its work and then of course we'll have to uh, once we get to the very end, we'll have to drill the uh, the spindle hole. So, um, yeah, let's uh, let's go back up and we'll measure that out. And of course, we're going to have to measure the distances that we need for the height. So that's the other component we need, which is about one and a quarter, and maybe just a touch hair beyond a t one and a quarter. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to fly with one and a quarter and see how that works. Okay. Onward and up. Okay, now that we're back up on the, uh, up in the shop here, what we're going to do is uh, measure out our distances. And uh, what you can't see off camera is I also have a similar a TD 165, which is the same size as a TD 160, um, just off camera over here in my shop system. So I can use that also as a reference for uh, some of my measurements. And uh, so uh, what I'm going to actually have to do is probably measure the distance up, across, up, Cross and then down, and that's going to be my overall length. And uh, I may have to, you know, pause the video, go down, and take some more measurements here uh, to get that right. But uh, 
ultimately the end distance is going to be 16 and a quarter for the length and the width is uh, that'll stay the same doesn't matter whether the bends are in there or not so we can do out the, the uh, we can do the, um, the width measurement up front draw a line straight down it and then uh, and then we'll measure each of the segments as it's uh, for fit and then uh, and then lay it out here and then I can cut it out and then we can start uh, doing the bending on the bending machine. So I'm going to go into uh, time lapse on this just because it uh, can get tedious and I may uh, go off camera here to get some more measurements from the, uh, the downstairs turntable. I went back, went back down and uh, measured, and uh, what I'm going to need here, and I want to make sure this corner is nice and solid. I want to pick the best side for uh, what's going to be down. And it may end up being this side. Yeah, so I'm going to use that side here to finish off this line out there. And I'm going to start backwards from here, and the up rise from the edge of the plinth is one and a quarter inches. So I'll do a line off there, one and a quarter inches. So let's uh, turn it away, complete this line to this side. I think I like this as a flatter end, so uh, there's a little bit of a few irregularities on this end. So what we're going to do is we're going to carry this line off all the way to the end. That's 13 inches, which is the uh, distance that we want, just to make sure. Yeah, and it works out on the other turntable too, because it's the same basic dimensions, the inside dimensions. And uh, so the next point is a one and a quarter inch rise. So that was one and a half, there's one and a quarter, so let's... Uh, Bring this off the table so this can be right down on the plexiglass. So that's one and a quarter. And that's what I'm going to do. And the reason I, I don't use a really, really fine point for this is because the bends on these, uh, on these bending machines, there is a radius to the bends and it's a directly relation, in relationship with the thickness of the material. Um, so there's really no point in having a totally um, fine line. You just want to sort of have a, you know, these are fine point, but uh, it's not super fine. And then you just lay your uh, nichrome wire so that it sort of middles that, so that you've got that's really what your your measuring your measurement is from. Um, so what we're going to do? Connect those connect the dots. Make sure it's perfectly uh, ninety degrees. And there's our rise right there. So then the next dimension was 11 inches from this line out to where it's going to rise up. So if we can get a training aid over here, which is my original desk cover, um, the distance from the edge of the turntable to where it starts to rise here is uh, 11 inches. And then it's five and a quarter inches to the outside edge of the, uh, the right side of the plinth as we're looking at the plinth from the, uh, the front. So uh, that distance is 11 inches. You have to sort of account for that radius. As you can see, this is a little thicker one. Um, I like to work with the thinner stuff. It's easier to handle. It's cheaper. Um, and it's a little bit flexible here. But when you make them into the sizes of those, they're actually quite rigid is what I find. And uh, and then if I want to, I can actually go to a plexiglass. We've got uh, industrial uh, paints and plastics 
uh, downtown, which I can get uh, thicker ones, but uh, it gets proportionally more expensive to buy the, the, le the, the plexiglass for um, thicker ones. And I've done that with the colored ones, as you, as you saw down in my, uh, my man cave there. So we'll uh, carry on with the uh, hyperlapse. Okay, here's the geometry laid out, and uh, so what I've uh, mapped out here is, and I've put the dimensions here on the uh, on the the skin on the uh, the plexiglass. So it's one and a quarter inches for the rise up to the platter level, uh, coming from the edge of the plinth, and then it's eleven inches over to the first bend, which is the bend you would see here on. Uh, so this distance from here to the edge of the the, uh, the plinth is, ele is um, 11 inches, and then this rise is 2.5 inches, and then this is 5 and a quarter inches, and then this drop is basically this rise plus this rise, which is essentially uh, 3 and 3 quarter inches. That's if everything's square. Now the beauty of uh, doing working with plexiglass and bending is if things don't sort of line up, you can you can uh, cow it in, cow it out a little bit just to get everything to fit. So uh, my dimensions are as good as I, I can possibly get it. So now what I need to do is I need to make a cut, uh, a straight cut with a jigsaw from here to here and here to there. And uh, hopefully I can do that with a steady hand without uh, breaking the big sheet. That's going to be the tricky part. And, uh, and then uh, once I've got this sheet laid out, I don't want to bend it with the uh, the skin on it. So now that I have these lines, what I would do is just with a sharpie mark each of the uh, the points where on the edge, and then I can peel this back. So I like to peel it. I don't like to because you might melt it into the uh, into the Luxan or the uh, the acrylic, and uh, and actually bend it while the, the skin is off and when it's clear and see-through. Right now it doesn't look clear and see-through because it's got that coating on it. Uh, but you'll see when I uh, when I get to that stage. So now we're going to pull out the jigsaw, make some cuts, and uh, I'm going to double check my measurements here before I uh, start cutting. Um, as you can see I do have a little bit of extra room there but uh, it does take up a little bit of real estate to uh, to do one of these as opposed to the rounded ones because you, you're using more uh, more plexiglass. But I think it'll be worth it in the end. So uh, let's do that. All right, um, before we get to cutting the big piece, um, I normally keep a, I've done a few of these projects, so, uh, but when I haven't done it in a while, I like to uh, do a dress rehearsal. So here is a uh, scrap piece of Lexan, the same stuff that uh, I'm gonna be cutting here. And uh, what I did was I built a support table over here um, so that when I cut it, it doesn't shear off and snap the, uh, uh, snap the Lexan as I'm cutting it along. So uh, a little bit of a dissimilar height, but it's enough to uh, provide the support I need. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a test cut and just to make sure, A, that uh, I'm not going to, if you go too fast, you can actually cause cracks in the... Um, you know, force it and you can cause cracks in the Lexan and if you go too slow then you can start doing the warble kind of effect so I want to get a sort of a practice cut in here just to get the pace and uh, see how it uh, turns out and the other thing is if you start too slow uh, the blade going up and down on the jigsaw can, uh, can cause this to flex up and down and cause it to crack when you initially start it so again uh, I want to come up to a bit of good speed before you start cutting into the material. You see? That one caused a crack. Just a superficial crack, but it did cause a crack. So, um, yeah, maybe this blade isn't the optimum blade for this. That's not going to work. 
Hmm. I think I gotta go to a different blade. Yeah, because as soon as I kicked in, you can actually see the crack here it started. And uh, that's not good. Especially when you got a big piece and you don't want to wreck it. Okay, so I've had a uh, rethink of how I was going to uh, cut this. Um, I went online and did uh, some research on uh, cutting plexiglass. And for the thinner stuff, they re recommend using a... Uh, a uh, an acrylic cutting knife, which I actually happen to have, I bought one previously, uh, or you can use uh, just a one of those uh, uh, razor knives that you can buy in, in the stores. And uh, basically, what you do is you draw out your, uh, and this works particularly good for uh, straight lines as opposed to curved lines. There's other techniques for doing curved uh, cuts, but uh, I'm only interested in doing a uh, a straight edge right now because uh, unlike the other ones where I used to use a jigsaw to do a curved around the edge um, there's also a, uh, a Dremel tool that you can use to uh, to cut curved edges and everything but I'm uh, just straight doing straight edges here so I've resurrected to using this uh, acrylic, acrylic cutting knife that you can buy at any hardware store and uh, I found another piece of plexiglass, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of do a test cut with this, and it's exactly the same as uh, this stuff previously. Oops, stepping on the dive here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, uh, I found a blue one, uh, I'm just going to trace out, so I've put the sheet over the other template that I just measured and showed you here online, um, and I've got the smaller sheet that's uh, just the right length and it's squared off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to translate these lines over to this other sheet and I'm going to cut this one down. I only have to do the one cut because everything else fits perfectly. I, I got lucky with the uh, the width on this. I guess they're standard width for these uh, turntables so it's a no-brainer to uh, cut them to the right width I guess. Keep moving it. Make sure everything's even and lined up. There we go. This one's a little bit out now. Second line here. Point that. And here's a school next door. I'm going to make here is that one right there. So I'm going to take this uh, other sheet, the large sheet, and I'll, that'll save me, if this one turns out, then it'll save me, I'm just using this as a test sheet, but it uh, turns out that I won't even probably have to use uh, this sheet, and I can uh, save it for another uh, another turntable, or I can change one of the ones I have down, down below. Okay, so you want to have it so that you can cut the continuous length. I need a straight edge that's going to be long enough, which is that one. Maybe this one is better. This one longer. Yeah, I think this one's a little bit better. I'm going to take it right to the edge here so that this recesses. And there's my cut. And then I'm going to use my little knife here to score the, uh, so basically what this knife does is you score the, uh, the plexiglass, and you, they say to do about 10 or 12 passes, you want to score it deep enough that when you uh, get it scored you can actually put it up to the edge of a straight edge of a table and then just snap it off, hopefully without uh, cracking anything. So that's what we're going to do. So 
We do the first score. And just keep doing passes. As you go trench deeper into it. Finish off this edge. There we go. I want to make sure it gets right to the edge on that. that'll be enough. Let's try that. We're going to take it to the edge of the table. Now this is where it's careful because as you bend it in one place it's going to flex over here so you want to make sure that you do it. There we go. Look at that. Nice, nice straight cut. And we'll go with a, uh, a razor knife that I have handy here. And then uh, you can see the film is what's holding it on here. So I'm just going to cut the film off. And now you've got your cut with all the lines that you had, uh, that I had planned out. And now we're ready to uh, bring the, uh, the bending machine on you want to make sure you got a nice clean work desk. And, uh, I keep using this, this brush handy just to uh, keep any dust and everything off of it. So you don't want dust to, to scratch or, or mar your, uh, your plexiglass sheet once you take the protective coating off. And there we go. That's the spare sheet there. And now we're going to get the. Uh, now we're going to get the. You can hear the school next door. They're making announcements. So here's my plexiglass bending machine, which I uh, made myself. It ain't pretty, but it does the trick. So what you have is a channel here, an aluminum channel, and. Uh, Basically, plug this uh, some springs because uh, nichrome. This is a nichrome wire that's used in uh, electric heaters. And basically, what it allows you to do is uh, run voltage through it from a uh, variac that I'll show you here pretty quick, and uh, that will go red hot. And then you uh, have this block here to make sure everything's perpendicular, and then you can bend the machine. Bend the uh, the plexiglass using this, and what I use is a uh, speed square like this. And when I bend the uh, the plexiglass, I make sure it's 90 degrees with my speed square on the back, and that makes it 90 degree bend basically. And we're going to bend it along the lines of each of these. So what I do here is. Uh, Using my little marker, I'm just going to mark the edges, and this will polish off of where the lines are. Because once I take the film off, you won't see where the uh, the mark the lines are anymore. 
So you want to make sure it's on the edge here, and that's that's your lineup with the uh, the nichrome wire on the edge. So and you can sure you get the edge. Sometimes you get a little extra protective coating over there, so you want to make sure that it's amply marked on the edge of the uh, plexiglass. Looks like they're having a popcorn sale at the uh, middle school next door. There we go. Finally, this one. So there you have it. That is your marks. And now we can uh, make sure there's no dust anywhere. And even a little dust can scratch your, uh, your plexiglass. And what we're going to do is we're going to peel the... Uh, so here I thought I was videotaping the whole time, but... Uh, I wasn't. <laughs> I think uh, for whatever reason my, uh, I didn't push start or something like that. But anyway, what I ended up doing was I did cut the, uh, the plexiglass. I had to change my uh, uh, technique. I went with a plexiglass cutting knife that you can get at any, uh, at any uh, hardware store. And basically it's got a uh, cutting edge on it. And what you do is you put a steel ruler along the edge and you just score the edges uh, numerous times, about a dozen times, and then, uh, then you can snap it off. So I had a spare sheet, so I have my full sheet over there. Uh, so I had a spare sheet, so I ended up uh, using this because it was smaller, easier to work with. And so what I did was I cut this down and then I uh, transferred the markings. And then what, I, what you have to do is, uh, after you peel off the uh, protective cover, uh, that's where the lines were drawn on, what you'd have to do is actually mark the edges of where the lines go, because otherwise uh, you won't have any guides here to, uh, to uh, bend your uh, pieces by. So here's the one and a half inch strip. You got a mark on each edge. And I've got my, uh, my bending machine here, which I've uh, just brought from over there. And all it is is a simple uh, thing, a base of wood with a, an aluminum channel in it. And then I've got this nichrome wire, which is the same kind of wire that's used in uh, electric heaters, space heaters. And I got a coil of that and I just uh, measured it off to distance. And I put a spring on the one end because uh, what happens with the... Uh, Nichrome is it uh, it contracts or expands with uh, whether it's uh, electricity and it's being heated or or not. So the spring actually, when it expands due to, due to the heat, takes up the tension of the wire so it doesn't uh, just sag or whatever. And the channel is to keep it electrically isolated from the rest of the uh, well, it's basically wood, but uh, from the. Uh, 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 from the plexiglass and, and from the surrounding wood. And then you can see the line of the, of the line and that's where your heat is gonna be. So what we're gonna do here, I've hooked up my uh, Variac to it. This is, uh, you gotta be really careful because this is um, open circuit to an AC uh, Variac. Um, so you gotta really be, pay attention to what you're touching and, and whatnot. I use a speed square here, so when I do the bend, um, I'm able to get exactly a 90 degree um, measurement and a uh, 90 degree bend on the, uh, on the piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up this. If I go to about 30 volts on the Variac, usually it will go red hot this wire. And you leave it for about 20 seconds or so. Um, you can actually judge by... by pulling on this and seeing if it's starting to get fluid or not and we're gonna we're gonna do our first bend here so uh, very active down to zero volts not anywhere near the wiring uh, this is exposed wiring so uh, um, yeah you you got to do this at your own risk I, I take no uh, responsibility for anybody that tries this you have to know a little bit about electricity and where it's going 
and what not to touch and everything. So you have to be very careful about what you're, how you're doing this. So we're going to turn the power on. And then I'm going to turn my variac up to about 30 volts. And you can see it's red hot here. And we're going to give it a little bit of time. We're going to do a little bit of a bend. You can tell if it's uh, hot enough to actually bend the plexiglass. Yeah, now it's starting to bend. And there we go. You don't want to get it too because otherwise it'll bubble on you. And we use this to get your 90 degrees and now you let it cool. Now the plexiglass is cooling. And this is our first one and a quarter uh, inch bend in the plexiglass. Should almost be cool enough. heat too long because it's a little bit bubbled. So I went a little bit too high I think temperature wise. So it looks like we will have to use the other one but uh, anyway you get the idea of how to do that. Um, so we're gonna have to that's why I wanted to do this as a test piece. And also the other thing is I need to orient it so I need to get my bends in the right direction. So some of them I can't actually bend here so I have to actually bend it on the side of a table uh, because I'm, be I'm bending it the other way. So the next bend is going to be out. Yeah, too hot. You can see it's all bubbled there. Yeah, I should have done a test, test bend to uh, get the right time to do this. Okay, so what we're going to do All right, so I'm going to do uh, what I should have done in the first place, which was do a test uh, piece here. So I've got a little piece of plexiglass that was uh, an off cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a little bit of time trial here. And I'm thinking about 15 seconds will be enough to, uh, to heat it because I let it cook a little bit too long and it bubbled up the, uh, the plexiglass. So, and I'll turn the volt voltage down a little bit too so the heat will go down a little bit. All right, so we're going to go to uh, turn it on. And I've got my, I think it was 20 seconds is what I did before. Talk too long while I was doing this. No, close. It's okay. There we go. On. Right on the minute. So it's oh, it's on. I haven't applied heat to it yet. So let's do this on the quarters. Fifteen seconds. There we go. Now I got heat. There's our heat. Less than 26 volts. I'll turn it off. Not quite. Oh, there we go. 
that's perfect. Perfect. It stays flexible for a while so you can manipulate it without worrying about it uh, solidifying on you. There we go. Yeah, overcooked that one. I still want to try that. It's still good to have this piece because now I got to bend it this way, which I can't do on the board. So what I actually should have done was I should have bent this, done this bend first, and then this bend towards the end, so I can. And there you have it. So no bubbles whatsoever in the edge. And it's a perfect bend. So now that we got that down pat, I'm going to leave the voltage there so I just have to turn it on and off so it's not going to be too high of a temperature. And it's off, <coughs> but I would still want to do a little bit of a practice on this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend this back flat because I want to do this piece first and then just see the uh, the sequence of the bends I'm going to do here. Okay, so let's just bend this until it goes flat. Because I've already screwed it up anyway. You'll see it relax. That's, that way I can uh, do this bend first with the 90 degrees because it doesn't matter which way you do it. Okay. It's good. All right, so let's do this bend. So this is another practice evolution. So we've got, this will be the, uh, the rise on the, uh, the dust cover. So let's get a bit of a time here. Start with 20 seconds. See the spring relaxing as the uh, as the heat is applied. Yeah, that's working. Twenty seconds, a little bit longer. Yeah, it's been about two years, I think, since I've made, done one of these, so we forget all the procedures. So it's a good idea to have a couple practice pieces to. Uh, uh, do some trial and error to make sure you don't uh, get everything sorted out. So it's a good thing I used the scrap piece and uh, I've got my uh, whole piece over there to, ready to go. So hopefully that will go smoothly. 
when I do that, I'll probably do it by uh, Okay, I'm a little bit chuffed. My uh, camera keeps shut, auto shutting off on me, and I have to keep. I guess I got to keep keep my eye on the camera because uh, it missed half of what I just did here. Um, anyway, I did the uh, the follow-on bend, which you can see there. And uh, now what we're going to do is just do the last bend, and then I'm going to go and do the real piece that uh, I planned on doing. So I did botch this one on the, you can see the bubbling here from the, uh, the thing, and I'm figuring it's about 30 seconds to, uh, there we go, I'm going to do a quick heat job here, and then I'm going to put uh, do the final bend here, and you'll actually see what it looks, my intent, intended look is for this thing. And uh, I'm finding that 30 seconds at least at this voltage, which is about 20, Four volts, I guess, is what's wor what's working. And that's enough. And then we can bend it. And just let it set. then you'll get an idea of uh, what my concept was for this uh, dust cover. A little bit choked about that camera. I've done lots of long videos and it just keeps keeps shutting off at me. Because maybe it's because my batteries are dying or somebody's trying to phone me or something. I don't know. It keeps kicking me off. So. Starting to cool nicely. Okay. And there you have it. So there you have the uh, the piece. And uh, let's go down in my uh, man cave. I'll show you on the turntable how what kind of a fit it is. And this will be a good gauge as to whether the, uh, the markings were uh, accurate or not. And then uh, the only thing I would have to do is drill a hole in here where the spindle is, and then that should sit nicely on it. So that's what we're going to go do is uh, take a Sharpie with us, and, uh, and we will be uh, marking where that, uh, that hole should be cut, the uh, center hole for the, uh, the spindle. Let's do that. So there you have it. That's what it's going to look like in the end. Uh, this one looks very, very good. The only issue is... I got a little bit of bubbling on the edge here from uh, overheating this uh, this one edge. And that was uh, from not uh, doing a test piece like I uh, I was espousing earlier. So the other thing I've got to do is mark the center point for the spindle, and that's where we're going to cut the uh, the center hole and uh, use a, a drill press for that. But as you can see, I think I pretty much nailed it. It's on uh, really good on this edge here. Uh, it's coming off a bit. I may have to bend this one in a little bit just to, you know, once it's on that spindle though, it should be fine. So there it looks good. You see the edge there. And then here it looks good. I think we've got a winner. I don't even probably have to do another bend. Just plunk that hole and then it'll sit down on properly on the platter and then it'll be good. So there you have it. Um, that's the procedure of how to do it. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll do the next one in, uh, the good one in uh, hyperlapse. And uh, hopefully the ca ca camera won't keep shutting off on me. And then I will, uh, then I'll do a wrap up sort of video at the very end. Uh, so as you can see, that's a really nice, uh, really nice uh, cover. And the beauty of it is, Unlike this one where, you know, yeah, it's kind of cool. It looks very nice, but, uh, you know, there's entry points for the dust to get in and everything. So um, this is not ideal. It's smaller and it's easier to manipulate when you're playing records. Uh, um, and I don't mind doing dusting. I always keep a, a duster uh, handy, basically. 
but uh, but I kind of like the funky look of this one matching that turntable anyway. But this one will give me a better coverage for dust protection for the turntable. So there you have it. Um, that was my practice one. Let's go do the real one. All right, I've cut the uh, the hole and uh, everything's sitting on there just nicely. The only thing is I have to reheat this a little bit because you can see that it's at the outside edge. And uh, this is a little, I may have to flex this one out a little bit that way and then this one will come back into uh, there. So it's a little bit of a fine tuning. I'm not going to bother with this one because this was my uh, my test one but uh, and the way you uh, cut these holes is you don't just cut it in there because you'll 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 uh, I had to do a bunch of test pieces. Um, what you do is you have to sandwich it between two rather thick pieces of board and make sure you know where your drill point is and uh, and yeah that prevents any kind of uh, hairline cracks coming around the uh, the hole there so it came out uh, quite nicely as you can see right there it's not really focusing on it but there you go so um, that is the uh, procedure I'm going to use for the next one and as you can see other than uh, the little tweaking I have with uh, bending to do there um, it does look really nice so I think that will be an adequate dust cover for my new, newly restored uh, Thor TD-160 turntable. There we have it. This is the uh, the final one. You can see the uh, the old one is here, and you can see where the uh, the bubbling occurred on the. Uh, I left it too long on the heat, so I dialed down my uh, heat exposure time. And now, if you look at this new one, you'll see that all the seams are just perfect, and including this one. And so all I need to do now is to uh, mark the, uh, the center hole. And I might have to do a little bit more adjustments here and then uh, drill out the hole and then uh, the dust cover is complete. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. And the reason I drill out the hole is I can put on one of these. And that just holds the, uh, I don't use it for playing, but I use it to actually hold the dust cover in place. And uh, then it looks pretty smart, I would say. So there you have it. Um, this one I could probably relax it a little bit, but I kind of like the uh, the canted in look, just because it uh, bites onto the, uh, the plinth a little bit better. I want to have it nice and uh, snug fitting. I'm probably going to move it uh, a little forward, a little back more. And then uh, make sure everything's in adjustment, then mark the hole, cut the hole, and then uh, we got a done project. So I'll put a, a nice thorn st sticker on like I did the other one, which I'll show you upstairs. And uh, yeah, let's uh, call this one uh, done for the bucks, except for the hole. I'll, I'll do that and then, uh, and then uh, do another little clip. There you go, folks. All complete. Uh, it's still a little bit damp with the uh, Windex. I had to clean off all the uh, sawdust and everything from drilling the hole. And uh, yeah, it looks beautiful. It's no scratches. It's perfectly clear. Uh, it's nice having a nice new dust cover to uh, put on your crowning achievement. And there's the little uh, retainer so that prevents the uh, thing from moving around too much and spinning and look at that it is an absolutely um, great turntable or 
uh, dust cover for uh, my turntable. So uh, yeah, um, glad I did the practice run, and uh, it, it came out uh, really nicely on the uh, the final uh, final job. So it just uh, went smooth as silk. So um, any questions you have, please uh, put them in the comments, and uh, I try to get back every back to everybody that uh, that uh, has a query and. Uh, Hopefully we'll see you at the next DIY project I do. Thank you for watching.